You're listening to the King's Church Podcast. Visit us online at kingswithspeech.org.uk. Continuing our current sermon series, which is called Where Heaven Meets Earth. And today I'm going to be speaking about God with us. And in the series Where Heaven Meets Earth, um, we're looking at tents, tabernacles, and temples. And last week, Fiona looked at Matthew chapter 21 and spoke about the time that Jesus drove out the money changers and turned over the tables in the temple in Jerusalem. But today, I am rewinding a little bit, and we're going all the way back to Exodus, to when Moses had just led the Israelites out of Egypt. They had passed through the Red Sea, where God had held the waters apart for them. They have seen their enemies, the Egyptian army, destroyed They have received manna and quail from God in the wilderness. And Moses has received the Ten Commandments from God. And now God has called Moses up the mountain again for another face-to-face meeting. In fact, Moses goes up and down Mount Sinai seven times. He's pretty fit by the end of that, I would imagine. All right. So this is another occasion when Moses has gone back up the mountain again. So he's up there and he's entered the cloud and he's entered into the presence of God. And the conversation starts like this. And this is where we're picking up Exodus 25 verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to bring an offering. You are to receive the offering of for me from everyone whose heart prompts them to give. These are the offerings you are to receive from them. Gold, silver and bronze, blue, purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen, goat hair, ram skins dyed red and other types of durable leather, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense and oink stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastpiece. Then have them make a sanctuary for me and I will dwell among them. Make this tabernacle and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. One of the things that occurred to me while I was reading this was, well, where did they get all this stuff from to bring as an offering? Because they're on the run and they've just been slaves for many, many, many generations. So where did it all come from? Well, I quite like the fact that just before they left Egypt, God told Moses and Moses told them, just before we go, guys, go to the Egyptians and say, give us your stuff. And they did. They went to the Egyptians and said, we're just about to be on our way. Give us your things. And they were like, yeah, please take it. Take the things. Take all our stuff. Here's our jewels. Here's our gold. Here's our precious cloth. Here's everything. Please take it and go because, you know, we've been through these plagues and we don't want them anymore. And we don't want you here anymore. So get lost. So, That was pretty good, actually. So they've they've come out of slavery. They've got all this stuff. And actually, God had a plan and a purpose for all this stuff to use to build his tabernacle. And just after the section I've just read, we can see a whole detailed list of instructions as to how to build the tabernacle, how to make the items that would go inside it, how to use them, how to decorate them, how the animal sacrificial system will work, even down to the designer clothes that the priests were to wear, filled with bling, right? Gemstones sewn onto the garments and so on. And you can read it in Exodus chapters 25 through to 32. It's a lot. That's why I'm not reading it all today. But why so much detail? Why does it matter? 
Well, it matters because God is a holy God and sin is a serious thing. The tabernacle was to contain the Ark of the Covenant. And it's where the presence of God would be found. It's where heaven would meet earth. An intersection point where the power and the glory of God could be accessed by humanity. Things had to be a certain way so that the destructive curse of sin could be negated. And this could now enable God to dwell in that place. Now I sometimes take my children camping. Verity doesn't like it. So she stays at home and has a weekend off and lets me take the kids. Uh, we often go to, yeah, she's saying weekend off. Oh. We often go to uh, a Christian festival or something like that, um, or a conferences that require camping. And usually, usually you try to find a spot that's not on a slope. Sleeping downhill with your head lower than your feet is awful, if you've ever experienced that before. You also want to get a spot not too close to the portaloos, but also for obvious reasons, but also not too far away. Okay? And you also hope that your spot isn't too far away from where all the main events are happening. They usually are. It's usually a mammoth trek to get to where you want to go. And these main events usually on huge, massive, big stages or inside tents bigger than this hall really big venues and the Israelites were wandering around in the desert at this point they didn't know that life would be like this not just for the weekend like me with the kids going camping but for 40 years so they were a nomadic people at this time with no fixed abode walking in a very roundabout way towards the promised land. So the tabernacle, their main central place of worship that housed the very presence of God on earth, needed to be portable too. In essence, it was a massive tent. And it was to be a temporary place of worship for God's people. Although this temporary nature lasted quite a long time, not just for 40 years of wandering in the desert, but right up until the time of Solomon, when the permanent temple was then started to be built to replace it. Now, the tabernacle wasn't as ornate or complex as the more permanent temple that came later, but God still laid out specific instructions on how to build it. A rectangular fence surrounding, surrounded the tabernacle. Then you had in the courtyard, between the fence and the tent, the, the, the tab, you had the bronze altar where they would perform the sacrifices and the bronze lava where the priests would wash their hands. The tent itself had two separate rooms inside it. We had the holy place and the holy of holies. Now only priests could enter the holy place and inside that room, there was an altar of incense, there was a massive lampstand, and a table of showbread, each with their own symbolic purposes. And a veil separated the holy place and the holy of holies. Later we see in the temple a massive curtain does the same job. And inside the holy of holies, the high priest would see the Ark of the Covenant, which God had chosen as his dwelling place on earth. And whenever they would move the tabernacle from one location to another, priests would have to carry the ark that was attached to really long poles and they had to put them on, on their shoulders and carry the ark from place to place. And they were not allowed to touch the ark. And we see stories of sometimes when people did touch the ark, they died. So don't touch the ark, just lift the poles. And the tabernacle would be the first thing to be set up when they arrived at a new place to camp. And then tribe by tribe, they would set up encampments around it so that everyone could have equal access to it. 
And the tabernacle prefigured a lot of things we see fulfilled in the life of Jesus. In the wilderness, the priesthood was established, which enables us to understand the priesthood of Jesus, who is our great high priest. Now, the high priest would be the only one allowed to enter the Holy of Holies into the place where God's presence rested. And even then, ancient health and safety rules made sure that he had a rope tied around his ankle and he carried some bells on his shawl. So if he died in God's presence, he could be pulled back out again under the, the veil without anyone else having to go in to fish him out and then dying as well. So health and safety even back then. But this sets up a pattern that we see fulfilled in Jesus where one person comes on behalf of us all. Jesus also fulfilled the symbol of the lamb sacrifice. He was the ultimate and final sacrifice needed to atone or to pay for our sin. But I just want to zoom in a bit into one verse from today's passage. I want to look at verse 8. And it says, Then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. Make a home for me, and I will come and live with them there. I will be present with them. And isn't this a story we see again and again and again throughout the Bible? God wants to be with us. In the beginning, we see God walking and talking with Adam and Eve, enjoying relationship with his creation with humanity, that special part of creation that was made in his image to reflect himself to the world. We know sin enters the story and completely destroys this relationship, separating God from humanity, yet God still loves us and desires to come and dwell amongst us. The tabernacle, and Clive last week, or a few weeks ago, spoke about the tent of meeting. Um, this starts to put in place a pattern and a way in which God can come and be with us where we are. These tents create a space and a place where heaven can meet earth once again, albeit on a rather smaller scale. Then we see the temple being built, a slightly larger, more permanent place where God can dwell and be among us. But then everything changes. The cat is let out of the bag, or indeed God's presence breaks out of the building when Jesus enters the scene. Jesus, and we're just coming up to Christmas time, aren't we? Our Emmanuel, something we hear a lot of at Christmas time. And Emmanuel means God with us. God's very Son, part of the three in one, one in three Godhead Himself, comes and lives with us as one of us. John 1.14 says the word became flesh and made his dwelling, his home, his living among us. Some other translations say he tabernacled with us. He stayed for a while. Jesus has now ascended to the Father in heaven, but he didn't leave us empty-handed. In fact, 
He dwells amongst us right now through the person and presence of his Holy Spirit, who, by the way, is another part of the amazing three-in-one, one-in-three Godhead. And on the day of Pentecost, Jesus' Spirit was poured out onto all who believed in him and follow his ways. His Holy Spirit continues to be poured out on those who love and follow him, even to this day, helping us live for him, empowering us, teaching us, guiding us, and comforting us. We're told in 1 Corinthians 6.19 that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. We carry the presence of God with us. Everywhere we place our foot, as Clive said earlier on, everywhere we place our foot, we take the kingdom of God with us. But it doesn't end here. Just as Jesus tabernacled with us, and the tabernacle in the wilderness was a temporary structure. So Jesus' time on earth was temporary. Yet we look forward to the day when the permanent temple of God's presence is built, when heaven meets earth once again in its complete fullness, where heaven and earth will be completely made new, and where no sin is present to corrupt and destroy, where the new Jerusalem, we're told, will descend and be established upon the earth, where heaven will be on the earth and all will be made right again. So today, know that God wants to be with you. He wants to dwell among us. He asks us to make a sanctuary for him. He asks us to make space in our lives. So in our lifestyles, in the ways and, and habits and at the daily routines of our lives, let's make space space for God. Let's invite the Holy Spirit in. Allow him to work in us, draw us closer to God, help us carry his presence with us wherever we go. But it starts with a first step. God wants to come and be with you right where you are in your life right now, whatever that looks like. It may be giving your life to Jesus for the first time. It may be intentionally making space and time to be with the Lord. It may be a number of different things. Jesus, Holy Spirit, may you just speak to each one of us right now. Help us to know those things in our lives that are getting in the way of us making space for you. Lord, thank you that you want to be with us. Help us to build our lives in such a way that we're making a sanctuary for you. May our lives reflect that. Help us, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and make space. Throw out the, th the clutter. <laughs> Throw out the clutter, Lord. All the stuff that gets in the way. We make space for you, Jesus. Come and dwell among us. 
Amen.